Get your ears wrapped around the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. All the scoop you need to know from college basketball to the NBA and even March Madness. News of your rising stars. Topics on and off the hardwood. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Pauline, and you are listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. I'm your host, and this episode is going to be kind of a little bit more fun. Um, There is a lot of like fun things that are happening around um, the basketball world, and also a little bit about the NCAA, because there's some things happening in the NCAA. We're getting ready for season to start. There's a lot going on with the Olympics. And I just did an episode on the Olympics. So if you're interested in that, go listen to that. And but um, there's just a lot about to be happening. And it's I, (laughs) I laugh because I know I, I feel like I say that a lot. I feel like I'm always saying, oh, in my previous episode, or I say, oh, there's a lot going around the world of hoops, but there is, there's a lot going on. And it's funny because um, when I first started doing these podcasts, I was worried uh, about how I was starting the podcast. My first few were during the finals, the um so especially with, um, I, I kind of did like a recap of OKC and Golden State, but it was mostly starting when it was Golden State and the Cavaliers. And then I was kind of worried about what I was going to do moving forward because I was like, okay, once, you know, the finals are over, there's WNBA, but you know, um, that's not as much news that generates through the WNBA and then, you know, uh, the NCAA college basketball hasn't really started. And then I was like, okay, well, there is the Olympics coming up this summer, which is great. But then it's been kind of like a lot of fun and a little bit easier to get just news because there is always a lot going on during the off season. There was the free agency frenzy, which was a lot of fun and a lot of shockers, a lot of not like some things that we were shocked about, but not really because we kind of knew it was going to happen. There was just a lot of money every everywhere, just money literally everywhere in the NBA. And players were making huge amounts of money just to sit on the bench, which, hey, I'm not mad at them you know, it's okay. Do if that, if that's all you got to do, then you do it well and make your money, (laughs) boo-boo. So it's funny because there has been a lot going on around the NBA and around the WNBA and around college basketball and just around just the all-star game, just politics and around social media. It's just been a lot of fun these last few episodes, I think. And it was a lot more fun than I thought. And there's been a lot more still continually happening as we are wrapping kind of, well, not wrapping up the Olympics, but the the Olympics are in full swing and it's the medal round for both our men's and women's national team. And one exciting thing that has just recently happened, which always, I don't know if other people get as excited as I do, but um, I get really excited and I, um, actually just graduated from the from UC Irvine and so our men's basketball team and women's basketball team are successful there but uh the men's basketball team these last few years have been doing really well and they made history my last year there and so you know I've always had um I've always kept up with the men's basketball team at UC Irvine and I've always, um, even though now I'm not attending school there, of course, we're going to still keep up with our teams. And so I was really excited because this past week, 
uh, the schedules are coming out for college basketball. And it's a lot of fun because I have, um, you know, I, I told you guys how I like the preseason tournaments and I like the, um, and postseason tournaments are a lot of fun. But then, you know, in preseason tournaments and in exhibition games, it's a lot of fun because you sometimes get to see major players that are from other conferences and things like that. And if, if you're um, an alumni or you are some way affiliated with a, with a, you know, a program, but you don't live nearby, these preseason games are a lot of fun to go and to watch them. And so when the schedules come out, you get to see <laughs> where your favorite teams are going to be playing and see um, as your program does a lot better. Cause that's been kind of like the exciting thing for me as an anteater is seeing the caliber of, of the teams that are now on our schedules and seeing who we get to match up against and seeing when we get to match up against them and d figuring out your schedule to fit your team's schedule. And it's just a lot of fun. And I, like, like I said, you know, the, the tournaments that a lot of these teams get invited to or um, even host, which is also a lot of fun. It's just exciting to see your team and I, I think it, it builds the anticipation and I think that's why they release it and make like a big deal. Programs will write whole like articles and press releases about their teams and um, releasing schedules and who's on the schedule and what to watch for and what to look for. And then fans, we start preparing to go to those games and travel and it, it's just a lot of fun. It's it's a whole lot of fun to me and I think... Um, this year, again, of course, is going to be um, no no different than that and seeing these preseason tournaments. But one thing that's been um, kind of fun for teams that sometimes get this opportunity now, they have um, there. There's a rule that you can your program can participate in kind of it, it's during the summer and it's happening right now. Um, usually in August, where your team can actually go, your university, your your college team uh, can go play internationally for a few exhibition games. Most of these games, of course, have, were already announced earlier before, uh, I, I think before even season ended. So you, you kind of already knew that this was going to be happening for your team if they were um, doing this. And um they get to so the rule is that every four years you are eligible to do like a foreign preseason exhibition kind of like tour you're eligible every four years to do this and you get 10 practices with your team because you know there's a lot of rules and regulations during um the off season especially with college players um during like recruitment season and during like draft season and during just just the off season in general when they can practice how much they can practice um when coaches can get involved, when they can't get involved, breaks, all that. So there's, a, it's just, there's just a lot of rules to keep, you know, everything in order and to keep players safe and to keep new recruits and just the safety and like the, the, the rehab for their bodies and just the, the amount that goes into um, like recruiting and just, just things like that. So anyway, so they're allowed 10 practices, which is great because then they can really get a groove on and get you know um get get ready to go internationally and play and so it's a lot of fun and basketball is just really cool because you can travel the world playing basketball and and through this type of opportunity as a college player you can travel the world and if we recall um one i was um which just comes to my mind right now is they've been doing this kind of like for a while. And so big programs get to go overseas and it's, it's, it's a bonding time for the team. It's a bonding time for the team and their coaching staff. Um, and you just, just travel the world and play the sport that you love. And you get to even sometimes play against national teams for these variety, like, like these tournaments and these tournaments and things like that. So anyway, so UNLV actually right now is in the Bahamas and 
which I just think is so exciting because these places that they're going, some uh, like Kansas State, they're over in um, Europe, they're in Italy, and I think they are also going to be playing in Switzerland. But um, UNLV is going to have three games in the Bahamas. Unfortunately, they just recently lost to the University of Toronto in the Bahamas for their um, like you know, their opening game, the the first game that they played. They uh, but they only lost by one point, eighty to seventy nine. And they, um, you know, that was kind of due to free throws and fouls and ticky tack kind of fouls that, you know, that they didn't really have to make and things like that, not just playing smart and just little things. So that's, that, that, that's a lot of fun. And so, um, even it, it's nice to win games, especially, um, in preseason and, but these are just exhibition games. So it's more of a kind of like a showcase tournament and just, getting to travel and see other teams and play against them. So UNLV, the Rebels, they only lost by one for their first game. They have two more games that they're going to be playing in the Bahamas. And then, like I said, Kansas State is also away on um, a European tour, which is really exciting because they're actually just, I like I said, I believe they're also going to be visiting Switzerland, but they currently are playing in Italy. They're two and two right now and it's kind of fun because you they're playing against some national teams they just recently lost to the kosovo national team 85 to 74 but they these are you know college are college players and college players that we are our programs are developing and soon that some of them we will actually be seeing in the nba as well but these are guys uh, that are playing against professional teams and so like that's just cool just to say that as a college player that you played against a professional team and so like i said they lost um just most recently they um they're two and two they're going to be playing a total of five games but they're um some some noteworthy players that they had for kansas were sophomore kamal stokes he had 20 points so you know they're 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 playing very very well yeah they're losing but you know given the situation that they are playing professionals it, it this is good this is a lot of fun and then senior dj johnson had 10 points and 13 rebounds so he's recording a double double and so if your school i know from my conference that my um school is in UC Davis is doing a kind of like a European, uh, excuse me, a foreign exhibition tour as well, which is a, like just really cool. It, it's a lot of fun. I think that this kind of like shows the the fun that you can have when it comes to basketball and the excitement that basketball brings and how it literally is played and enjoyed and beloved around the world. And these are opportunities that these guys well, not even just these guys, just people in general don't really get the opportunity to one, do the thing that they love and do it around the world and get to meet people and showcase your talents and abilities around the world. And like the Bahamas, like really? How cool is that to be playing basketball in the Bahamas? And so um, we actually have to cut it to a quick break real quickly. But when we come back, I kind of wanted to discuss some other things that are happening around the NCAA. I know that I wanted to touch on some um, stuff post-draft things as well as uh, Shaq. He's always... A big topic to talk about. Uh, Shaq is always doing something. And um, his most recent announcement, I wanted to kind of touch, touch on that. And so keep it locked here. You're listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. Are you looking for help for your fantasy football team? Check out the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Get today's best advice on who to start, who to sit, even who you should draft. From sleeper picks to red hot lineups, they got it all covered for you. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash fantasy dash football dash podcast. We'll cover traditional leagues, dynasty, PPR, even IDP leagues. When you need fantasy help, there's just one show to hit up. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and Follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. And welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. And... 
the first opening of the episode of this episode, I was kind of discussing how exciting it is for some teams that are given the opportunity to play internationally. <laughs> I don't know why I said that so weird, but playing international ball at the collegiate level. And now when it comes to college there, you, you have a lot of options when you are a phenomenal player because you can decide to be a one and done kind of like Ben and um, who was number one overall. And that, that's great if that works for you. And if that's what you choose to do, then and especially in like his case, as well as Brandon Ingram, you know, these guys are given a special opportunity to be kind of like we call them one and dones and being able to do a freshman year of college and play at the collegiate level at a high caliber team and then shifting right over into the NBA. Now, just because you are a player who decides to continue with your collegiate career, excuse me, and not be a one and done, even though you are a great player. We have guys like, you know, like Buddy Hield, who um, was not a one and done. And so there, there, there's pros and cons to both because there, there's the pro that you go to college for one year, you have a great season, you're beloved by everyone. There's a lot of hype around you. Then you go to the NBA. And especially when you are drafted in the first round, that's great because you're, you're on a team more often than not, you're going to get used by that team and to, to be made, to make a difference for the franchise. So, you know, that, that's a great opportunity, but then the pro of staying in college and you get to develop your game, you get to, um, especially on a lot of these high caliber programs, you're learning from some of the best coaching staff who have produced a lot of NBA players. So you get that insight, you get just uh, the, the education, which is very important. And then you also get to, like I said, your body develops, you're older, you're stronger, you're hopefully a lot wiser, you're more um, versed in the game. And you get to have a lot of fun. Like college is fun. It's a great time. And when you are an all-star athlete on any team at any level in college, it's a lot of fun. And so one guy that I'm really kind of excited for this next season coming up who has um he's actually like a redshirt senior so he is staying in he stayed in college and he didn't leave early he didn't declare for the draft early or anything like that kind of this is kind of like a, like a little a little bit segue where um and i think i have kind of touched on this before but it's kind of nice i like that the ncaa um the new rules is that you uh, when you declare for the draft you kind of have a little bit more leeway before it's like officially official you can actually participate in a workout you can go to the combine if you're invited to that and um and so it's nice because you can kind of test the waters a little bit before it's too late and then you can also decide to go back to college and you don't lose your eligibility which they extended that time which i think is really nice, especially when this is such a crucial time in these athletes' lives to decide whether or not. And it kind of it would be a little bit kind of like stinky, a little sucky if you declare for the draft and nothing kind of becomes of it. But now you're not eligible to even just go back to school. So, um, well, you can always go back to school, but you, you eligible to play um, is what I is what I mean. So one guy who I said is a red shirt senior is Jaron Blossom Game. Now, first of all, I love his last name, Blossom Game, because I don't know. I just, it's a cool last name. And as an athlete, that's kind of a cool last name to have because he literally is blossoming in his game. Um, he, like I said, is a red shirt senior at Clemson. And it's not like this is a guy who really needed to stay in college, like where he's a guy that not good enough to play at the next level. I, I believe he's good enough to play at the next level and to do well in the next level. Um, it's just that he has for, you know, I, I'm not quite sure what his reasonings are. And it really, quite frankly, it doesn't matter because he's had a great collegiate, collegiate career, but he's decided to stay in college before, you know, and play out his eligibility before declaring for the draft. And so he's going to be somebody that I'm really excited to see play this next season upcoming season because he is a guy that 
he has already had some, you know, FaceTime and some media this past season because he's been doing so well for Clemson. But I'm just really looking forward to seeing how much more after this off season and after this time to develop and everything that he can go ahead and what he is going to produce. You know what I'm saying? He averages throughout his career here at Clemson. He's averaged 12 points. But see, last season, he was averaging 18 points. And so this is a guy that could very easily, after a lot of hard work in the offseason, be averaging 20 plus points per game. And that one is going to do great for Clemson. And two, just great when it comes for time for him to declare for the draft. He's making himself very, very eligible um, he, he's one of those guys that's going to get courted by teams when he decides to declare for the draft because he's going to bring so much one experience just from playing these years at the collegiate level and just, um, you know, mentally he's developed differently. His body is developed different, different now that he's older and things like that. And so it's going to be a lot of fun. I, I'm really looking forward to seeing him. And that that's one of the things that I think is a, a, a pro when you decide to stay in college is that mentally, physically, emotionally, game wise, you're you're just developed more and you give yourself time to get better and get better. And he's consistently has been getting better. You know, his first year at Clemson, that 2013-14 season, he was only averaging four points, you know, and now we zoom fast forward to 2015, 2016, and he's averaging 18 points. So, you know what I'm saying? So he, he is a guy that has continually gotten better, who I am very excited to see him continually get better in this season and just make a splash when it comes time for the draft. And so, and so I'm really excited to see how he is going to do, but we have to cut it to a quick break real quickly. And when we come back, I want to talk about Shaq and what he's doing as well as Samsung and the partnership that they're doing right now, really a fun thing that they're having with um, Team USA as well as a nice gesture made by um, Miles Turner of the Pacers. So keep it locked right here. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast, and I'm Pauline. We'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. I'm Pauline, and th- this this guy Shaq is um, a really fun guy. I always talk whenever I'm like talking to my friends or anything, and Shaq pops up or in the conversation, or most likely because he's in the on the TV in a commercial and a cameo or whatever. He's I just think that Shaq must have like a really fun life because he's always like I said popping up in some show popping up in a commercial popping up just everywhere he's done a a lot besides just basketball um he's of course well known through his basketball career but you know he was um kazam i don't know that's that's kind of like throwing it a little bit back but you know he's done acting um rapping ish you know it's funny to me because all rappers want to be ballers all ballers want to be rappers i don't know but anyway so um shaq actually is going to be in wrestlemania 33 allegedly supposedly um (laughs) um i believe it is officially official but him against wwe's big show now 
you got Shaq and you got Big Show. These are two guys that are both over, um, well, you, they're, they're seven footers. And so just that in general is going to be kind of cool because they're both like huge. And then <laughs> I don't know, it's just going to be, I think the showmanship and the entertainment side is definitely going to be a lot of fun. And I'm actually looking forward to that. I don't watch wrestling. I don't watch WWE. I don't, I don't keep up. I, I don't even really know anyone, you know, unless they have crossed over into like acting, you know, like The Rock, John Cena, that that kind of thing. That's kind of like my extent when it comes to wrestling and things like that. And so I, I'm actually kind of looking forward to that. It's, I think it would be a lot of fun. I'm sure it's going to be just a whole bunch of like hoopla <laughs> knowing Shaq. I know that he's going to just have a lot of fun with this. And so I am actually looking forward to that and watching that. And I think it would be a lot of fun. And I think that's kind of, again, when we opened up the show we are discussing how basketball takes you around the world um well it has the potential to take you around the world but it also has the potential to take you past basketball and to other ventures such as television and entertainment and things like that and it, it's just a lot of fun but then um also speaking of basketball and the entertainment samsung has their like virtual reality system situation thing going on it's like those goggles and you it's like a 360 kind of you're totally engulfed in that virtual reality situation whether it's like a game or a movie and I, I haven't had the chance to try it I do see the commercials and I've seen like um like YouTube clips of people testing it out and doing fun things with that and I think it would be a lot of fun I think Samsung does some really cool things and we've been discussing these last few episodes how the NBA and Team USA has been discovering and using different outlets and different mediums to bring their bring the organization to a deeper and more connected and intimate level with the fans and us so and changing the way that we view games changing the way that we read up on games and just interact with um, games and so they are, are Samsung and their virtual reality and Team USA men's Olympics here in Rio are giving us the opportunity to do kind of like a behind the scenes take like a day in the life of, of an Olympic basketball player and we can immerse ourselves in that virtual reality so it's a lot of fun I th that is one thing that I think that I would like to try is you are like on the team you're you're one of the players you know you're there in that action and everything in that behind the scenes stuff the groom all that kind of fun you know I'm sh I'm not quite sure all the elements to it um, I would assume some practice stuff uh, maybe hopefully even on the bus which would be kind of cool eating the cafeteria what do they do when they eat team meals and things like that I just think that that would be kind of a lot of fun and it would give us the opportunity to kind of pretend which um, who wouldn't want to at least pretend if we can't be it let's you know let's pretend fake it till you make it I guess <laughs> And so they are doing a partnership with Samsung and they're doing that, which I think is just a lot of fun. And I think it's, I, I have been saying this, that the way that basketball is evolving and the way that they're using different tools, outlets, and mediums to bring us a more intimate look. And I don't think you can get uh, more access, I guess, than doing a virtual reality of being on the team and doing things that with Team USA. So that's a lot of fun. And I think that it's going to be big, of course, for Samsung and big for the NBA. And now people like me who don't have a Samsung or the, the goggle thing, the virtual reality set, I mean, they're going to have to find somebody that does or someplace that's going to let me try this out or uh, somebody in my family is going to have to get it. So <laughs> again, as a business, this is another way that to bring in profit. But hey, we like it. It's fun. It's going to be a lot of fun and it gives us a unique look on a day in the life and I I just think it would be a lot of fun I did not see anything as far as if they're going to be doing it with the women's national team but hey I think that would be a lot of fun too what it's like to be you know such on such a winning team I think that would be a lot of fun too but um also I had mentioned before that Miles Turner of the Pacers 
uh, has been a little bit in the social media um, forefront these last, like this past week, because he bought his grandmother a new car and like posted it all over Twitter and things like that. And everybody was really excited for him to, to, to share in this opportunity. And see, that's what I'm saying. Like with the virtual reality, reality situation with Samsung, we, I, I think that it's going to do well because we like being in there and we like to see them on a personal level and humanizing and taking part. And I think that that's why Miles Turner just in giving his um, grandmother like a thank you gift and buying her new car because she has supported him up until this time and helped him get to where he is. And uh, so that was kind of like his thank you to her. And I think that's why Twitter like took it and ran with it because it, it made it personal and it made him more tangible and made him like human because a lot of these guys, we look at them as superstars when we forget that they do have families and that they're humans and that they crack jokes and that they, you know, they have to eat in the cafeteria, which I think would be kind of fun to do on the virtual reality is just to pretend like you're having lunch with them. Uh, you know, I think that'd be a lot of fun too. So that is what I wanted to share about the Pacers and Miles Turner. Um, so that is actually going to wrap up this episode of the basketball podcast. And there, like I said, there's going to be a lot more coming up now that the schedules are released and the NCAA, there's been a lot of new recruiting going on and some some workouts that are taking place. So there's going to be a lot to talk about as we move forward, um, even past the Olympics. So this has been the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. I'm your host, Pauline. You can always check me out on Twitter at GSMC underscore basketball. You can listen to this podcast and any previous and future episodes on our network website, gsmcpodcast.com. Also on iTunes, Google Play, and SoundCloud. It's been a lot of fun. So when we come back, Next week, we will have a lot more to talk about. This has been your host, Pauline, and have a good week.